Okay, so I'm back, and it's time for me to do something I haven't done in a while due to them taking a break and me missing a week, and that is a town hall recap. Now, this last town hall was a couple days ago. Sorry for the delay, guys. I know it's later in the week, but I just wanted to take some time to think about some stuff, maybe wait some for some more news that we didn't get to come out. And I checked out some other videos, and I think overall this town hall was kind of mellow without any big news. Some other news came out that I'll be making another video on later today, and that's the stats for Possibilis. And we'll go over the other airdrop card as well. I'm forgetting his name now, but the green guy who likes to throw trees around. Both those stats came out this week as those airdrop cards are coming up next for Rift Watchers and Chaos Legion. And it should be relatively pretty cool to see those coming out and us having to play the market. Also, don't mind the messy hair today. I just decided not to do it as I'm working from home. Now, getting into the town hall, we started off the town hall with a, a visit from the guys from Splex GG. The Splex site, I use it. It's a good site. I've been using the rental bot. They've got a lot of different tools. They have an integration now with a, with a Splinter Forge, so you can buy some packs. I don't know how their pack sale is going so far. I've bought a couple packs, but not on this account. But we'll see, you know, once this really gets going. I think that there's just so much going on in Splinterlands, end of the year, Christmas. Everybody's a little tapped out for money. So maybe maybe this launched at the wrong time, but we'll see what happens in the near future. Uh, the Splinter uh, Splex people are just talking everything up. I do know that Peak Monsters has also launched their rental market. Hopefully they'll get a chance to come on the town hall and kind of pitch that to everybody because, you know, competition between uh, third party vendors just leads to better pricing and deals for us. Uh, besides that, there were, they had some words from Wizards, but Matt wasn't there, so we ended up with Investigator, who had a barking dog on the screen. A little bit annoying. New database version. From what I've heard from some of the people that have to integrate stuff with the API, mostly devs, this has been a great up, uh, upgrade. Things are moving quicker and faster, and the, so that's great to know that we're starting to run on better technology. We have new music into the game. I don't know how much you guys have checked this out or if you even like it, but if you log into your account, and so I'll log into my one, one account I haven't turned it off on just really quickly, and I'll turn up my desktop audio for just a moment. And when you log in now, you are greeted by um, different music. And when you click around on the different pages, you get different stuff. Cards has its own song, as you can see, coming in. We'll turn that desktop audio back down. And we will log out of that account, so I don't have to deal with hearing that anymore. But it, overall, it, it's just an interesting thing. I don't know how many people are going to listen to the music. I don't know if it's that big of a deal, but it is something to have. Uh, it's good to know that there's different battle music now for Modern and Wild. It does make things a little bit better. So now if you wanted to stream playing the game, you might have some music that is a little bit more fun. And you are going to have uh, some, some FX stuff in the team creation. I would do that, but I don't have an account ready to do it with really quick. They fixed the dispel bug, what was interesting interesting and they made some improvements to the non-card market which so far has been working very very well i think it does give us the ability to sell some stuff directly on the site giving you access to all the customers uh weird beard came up he he didn't talk that much about you know anything really new except for the new ghost card tournament that's happening on the weekend that's going to be this time a bronze level tournament so everybody can take part in that i think if you go to the splinterland site and we go over here to events we should be able to find this though it's kind of always an interesting thing to have to find them let's see if we can it should be on let's see on 1210 right we're looking for like the bronze. Oh, I know what I can do. I can do, um, no, uh, nope. Nope. That's not what I was looking for. Uh, okay. Well, it's in here somewhere. I don't want to waste too much time there, guys. And then Marketing Chatter came on. He did say that they have some new cool partnership with Brave. I, that, you know, does, I think, get more people into our site and get them to sign up. If they're already into crypto, they already get into Brave. They go into Brave now and they go to the new Brave gaming page and Splinterlands is there for a solid month. That's a pretty good deal. The question is, is Splinterlands ready to convert those people to customers? That's the one thing I think we're all not positive on. Uh, Splinterlands was nominated for the best card game of the year. I already voted for them. You can check out their post here if you want to go ahead and vote for them. That was, you know, it's good to be nominated. It would be 
be better to win. Um, and there was a talk that he had, but I'm going to go over this once we get to the end. Nate came out. He 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 had this talk about AI and using AI due to that new open AI thing that's been making a lot of news on Twitter and going over the place. And he talked about what we're going to be able to do with land. So land, it looks like hopefully next week on the 13th, they're going to push the, out the ability for us to claim our lands so we can find out what area in the map that you're on then you're going to be able to get your coordinates and you'll be able to start distributing your plots if you're going to be distributing them out and we'll be able to start selling them on the non-card market on a special tab specifically for land so that's the first time we could see surveyed land that you'll be able to buy in certain areas on the map this is also going to be the first time we're going to see what people decide to do when they want to claim the lands now listen buying and selling plots at this time of the game is going to be interesting and probably very very expensive because nobody's going to know what is in their land yet if you don't know what's in your land then it's hard for you to sell it for the proper price what if i open up my track and i decide to sell a couple lands then i go to reveal my lands and i go huh that's funny i didn't get my guaranteed keep oh crap it was on one of those five plots i sold great i sold a keep to somebody for a very low price if i was selling it like a regular piece of land um, he dropped us some interesting eye candy. Here's Palasis Possibilis, <laughs> um, just kind of in a big card version of him. And then we got a new wallpaper, so we always like to save those. So let's do a quick save of that, right? Who doesn't like a quick, a nice wallpaper? We got the ancient redwood here, and we got his stats. I'm going to do a separate video on his stats and P Possibilis's stats as they came out today. But today we're just doing the recap. I want to get down here. We did have a nice little funny section where they showed the image and gave us the monocost for the promo card for the end of year sale so it's going to be archimus the bear haha <laughs> bear market end of year promo aggro would want some salt on this guy because the you know a lot of the crowd is getting salty and mad at them and they they just wanted to um you know we'll see what's going on here, here you'll see if we do decide to claim our land, this is what we'll be able to go to and look at. They're all going to be unsurveyed clan, uh, clans, but we'll have locations of where they are. This is a, a list view that you can go to. So if somebody who bought a region for a group, he'll be able to claim his thing. He'll have his 1,000 lands. And then if he's supposed to send 50 to me, he can click right on here and do a send to player and send 50 off. So that'll be a good way where they can spread them out. And since they're unrevealed, they have no idea which ones they're sending to who. It'll be completely random. But they do will, will know their uh, locations and territories and things like that. We got this cool little map here that we'll want to save as well. That is the map of Pretoria. You can see it is broken up into the different regions that match the different colors that we currently play with in the game. Um, you know, you got your dragons owning the middle. You got the death guys right next to them, next to fire. We got the waterland up here. Here is the white uh, color, which I forget their name sometimes. Here's Earth. And then um, there's neutral right the neutral lands it's kind of interesting they went with a color for neutral you think neutral would just be mixed out throughout everything but apparently they're the only ones that don't like to fight anybody i don't know <laughs> so we'll we'll see we'll see what happens here's here's them listed out as you can see the different colors here's an example of your deed location you'll get a territory region and a tract so a quick thing i'll talk to you guys about right here that i think a lot of us are going to have to decide on let's say you have two tracks like me or you have 10 to 20 plots like some other people or even three or four plots when you come into the reveal your location do you submit all of them at once so i get all of my lands in the shimmering coast if i happen to roll shimmering coast or if the, or do I just do half of my lands my first time and then I end up in the shimmering coast and then I wait a day and then I reveal my other one and it ends up over here in the pristine northwest. So this is kind of an interesting thing. I'm spread out into two different areas. They'll probably have two different specialties in the kind of things that you can mine. But then I miss out on my 20% chance to get the castle for the Shimmering Coast instead, or one of the regions in the Shimmering Coast, I should say. Instead, I've got two keeps in two different areas, unless I got really lucky and hit that castle on a 1 in 10%. So I don't know what to do with my tracks. I think it might be beneficial if you're going to have 100 lands to have them in two different areas so that you can look have a double chance of getting what will ever be the most desired 
um, territory to be in. But at the same time, do I want that double chance to pull that castle and be the, the lord of a region because I own the castle, even though I only own 200 of the lands? It's going to be an interesting decision to make, and I have a few days to decide what to do. Comment below what you think. Claim both at once end up in the same area or claim them on different days end up hopefully in different areas don't know for sure now getting back to just kind of some of my final my thoughts now that we kind of covered what they went over overall i would say without matt here we didn't get any talk on the soulbound rewards cards the question and answer part of the thing was kind of interesting but nothing really big mostly him saying no 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 and i don't mind that one interesting thing was aggro did say that with soulbound rewards cards that would mean that players like me who play the game now and players who join the game later wouldn't have access to the same cards couldn't that be a problem he didn't seem to think so at all he has no problem with the fact that i might have a card that you cannot get uh, if you join later on in the game so i don't know how people are going to take that uh, good or bad it doesn't necessarily bug me a lot i we didn't even though we talked a lot in mavtrack about the idea for kyc to earn and get the bot farms out that way that didn't get brought up on the town hall which was kind of disappointing I think I'll list a question for the next town hall to see if we can see if that's even on the radar. We did get hints from Chatter and Weird Weird that KYC modes of the game may be coming. So while it didn't directly get brought up, it got indirectly brought up by basically saying there is going to be some modes where you'll probably have to be KYC to enter to prevent bots from being in them, hopefully, and being no bots allowed, mostly in the tournament and brawl area of the game. We also had an ongoing theme in this town hall of aggro asking people with the new company setup, did you do you guys feel like we're going to be able to kind of roll in at the same speed that we were running at before? And a lot of people are dismissing this, but when I actually heard how they were set up, they're finally set up similar to how my company, I'm in an IT department and how we work with our daily meetings and daily scrums and our ticketing system where everybody can see what tickets are out there. You can meet every single morning and be like, Look, these are the tickets that are on my plate management which ones would you like me to uh, work on first because this a little fire over here happened on this server I got to fix that first and then I'll get back over to my project that I'm working on over you know cards over the next couple days this is a very good and efficient way to run an IT department and if they weren't doing it before that means they are going to pick up some efficiencies I can tell you this because I've been in an IT part department that wasn't doing it and then one that was another thing to remember they did not lose 50% of their devs they only lost about three or four of them and the other they still have like I believe 17 out of the 19 to 21 they had before so can they still pushing through with building projects uh, first? Yes, they did lose a lot of their support team. They did lose a lot of their community management team. So these type of things are where we saw the big loss in the company. They won't be able to fix support tickets maybe quite as fast if there's a big bug. They won't have as many people, you know, managing the community in the discord but they still have their builders and they still have their leadership giving the vision for those builders to build so that's something i thought was pretty exciting other than that no huge crazy news came out in this town hall there were no big drops or anything else Agro did say he was open to the idea of us minting less vouchers so that vouchers could go up in value maybe or maybe even there was an idea pitch saying that maybe once you reach X amount of vouchers the whole system just stops printing vouchers and starts to print the, and then starts to print them again once a certain amount of them have been used up that's a very interesting idea I think I would support either of those because the current system is not working for vouchers holding anywhere near the kind of value we thought they might there's just way too many out there and not enough people need them when they are buying them to use them but overall you know it was a lot of like yeah we could do this we could do that we're gonna have, we'll have to do a dal vote um no big stances no updates on the soulbound rewards cards and how that would work and we didn't get stats in the town hall for the new promo card or the new summoner so that was a little bit disappointing though the new summoner came out today so we'll do that video on that and that'll be coming out after this one 
other than that, everyone, I just want to go ahead and do my spin to give away that 2000 DEC that I owe for the last one. And remember, if you come to my Hive blog and make a comment, you can get your name on this wheel. And it looks like Olaf.gui is going to get that win. Congratulations, and I will send you out your DEC. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you later.